All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm uh, just back from holiday from Puerto Rico, so went home uh, for a week. Awesome to see family and eat eat all that amazing food. And I'm back. And two great videos from two of my favorite content creators. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the Linux Cast one, but I want to give a shout out to Trafitin, who actually did two videos. They did an interview with me um, on destroying desktop Linux, uh, which I, I thought was pretty fun. That's two and a half hours of my BS. So uh, go check that out. And then a six month Bluefin review. Uh, both both reviewers covered a lot of things that I think are worth discussing. So maybe at some time, uh, we could get all three of us in a room and talk about this kind of stuff. But the only way you can do that is by watching the videos, smashing that like and subscribe button, and then uh, making, making this kind of content worth their while. Uh, but today, finally, let's see what Matt has to say. Um, because I'm really looking forward to this. Now, you know, 40 minute, 40 minute review on Bluefin, which is weird. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be so long, you know, uh, but it was great. I, I think I've watched it four or five times. There's no way I'm going to be able to cover the whole thing. Um, plus, be honest, you just want me to get to the end, to talk about all the stuff that he doesn't like. Of course, right? Um, however, I do want to go through the intro because um, there's a few things that are probably worth uh, discussing and stuff like that. And I've got notes and everything. Uh, so let's go. So for the last four or five months, I've been working on my next long-term review. And as I announced in the video proclaiming where I was going, I've been looking at Bluefin. Now, one of the reasons why I chose Bluefin was because it's one of those distros that proclaims to be the future of Linux. Now, this is a term that has been well used over the course of, you know, like ever. So I love this point in particular because those of you that have been watching the channel in the past probably noticed that um, even though the marketing says, you know, the future and all that kind of stuff, really what this is is catching up to Linux desktop to where the rest of Linux was like in 2016, uh, which I think is is pretty ironic and funny, right? Because um, a lot of the concepts and things that were built around and all the cloud, don't worry, we're going to talk about cloud native today. And all the cloud native tooling and all the stuff that we make this has been around for a long time, right? And the idea, the entire mission of our project was to, uh, you know, adapt the Linux desktop to do that with Bootsy, which is um, uh, an upstream project going into the CNCF that uh, allows us to use container patterns to build the desktop. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Let's see what Matt's going to talk about. And obviously, most distros... They're just distros. They don't do anything revolutionary, and they're not really or actually the future of Linux. They're just distros, right? So I took that with a grain of salt, but I knew that there were some things about Bluefin that were different, and that during my long-term review of the distro, I would have to fight along and learn about those differences and see how they actually changed the way I used it. So that's what I've been working on for the last five months. And I have to say, just kind of a overarching conclusion before we jump into the nitty gritty details, Bluefin is fantastic. It's that's it, we're done. Smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, so he's gonna go ahead and go into a lot of, a lot of things uh, that I wanna discuss here. Um, and I'm just gonna let this play, but I'm gonna kill the volume here. Uh, formerly known as silver blue and Keen uh we're, we're gonna get to the end here a little bit and, uh, fill them out and, and so talk about that kind of stuff so that normal let me go ahead and mute that all right um so uh at 454 so I'm, I'm just gonna go through the timestamps. i'm gonna get through this as fast as possible because i'm also really tired uh but i'm really excited about about making this video so i want to get to the end uh where we talk about all the all the stuff all the problems um so uh, 452, containers are the future of Linux. Again, you know, containers are very old by now, so it's they are new to the desktop, right? And our, our kind of project goal is to make all that nice and and um, automated for people and all that kind of stuff. 926, Matt says, he ended up on the developer experience edition, which you can turn on and off uh, via the you just command. So if you accidentally download either edition, and you're on the wrong one, you can always toggle them on and off uh, depending on your use case, right? So if you have an old machine that you're like, oh no, um, you know, I, I actually wanted it to be in my non-developer machine, you can always switch. Remember, all the switching is atomic, so it like doesn't matter. Uh, so that's really good. On the rebooting bit, uh, in the documentation, we say like, don't overthink it, just shut 
your machine off when you're not using it. Um, but you know, Matt is like me sometimes where like I have a machine downstairs that I never reboot. Right. Um, but if you do want, we do have a system update icon in the menu. You can click that and it'll do a manual update as if you're on a traditional distro and then prompt you to reboot or shut down at the end. Uh, which could be useful for, for some folks. Uh, it's actually funny how we made this thing is uh, we automated everything. And then when a, someone, someone on the discord was like, you know, one of the things I miss is like sitting here and watching all this Unix crap scroll by, you know, I wish I but like you automated it away. So um, we put a system update in the menu for you to do that, to get that experience, I guess, if you want, or, Ooh, um, or, um, you could just type, you just update and it will give you that manual, beautiful, janky experience. Uh, and if you want to reboot, uh, with that, um, one of the things I found interesting is, um, Matt discussed open Sousa's updates and how he's running zipper by hand and it's like slow and he like, doesn't like it. Um, automation is not distribution specific, like stick it in a cron job. Right. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure open Sousa's Eon. I know they're going through a rebranding. Eon does that by default. I mean, where do you think I got the idea from? I was like, well, Richard's going to get away with it. I'm going to try it, right? Um, so that might that might be worth a shot, right? Because you get a lot of the user experience. Yeah, it's file system snapshots and sure, man, whatever. But um, you could probably take out some of those service units that they use to automate all that stuff and run it on any distro. Same with your flat pack thing. Just toss them in service units if you can. Uh, or if you want, if someone, if someone wanted to make a package for all these distros and just, you know, stop messing with me, <laughs> um, dot RPM or whatever, uh, that's totally possible. Um, so that's not distribution, uh, specific, uh, 2036 mentions so many different ways of getting your packages. Um, yeah, this is kind of a Linux thing. Like I, I, you know, first of all, 95% of users are just going to use the browser and the rest are going to use the GNOME software, but. You know, for people like us that open the terminal um, is going to be there. Uh, same with brew. I was actually expecting gnashing of teeth with brew because I know some some people get like really upset. You know, <laughs> they're like uh, they don't like brew because it, you know, it breaks whatever Linux uh, paradigms or whatever. Um, but doesn't use it, which is totally a legit use case. Didn't use DistroBox or BoxBuddy either. Um, Matt, I, I feel like we're a mirror here, I think, in the initial in the initial days, you know, I very much am, uh, was really into DistroBox and things like that. In fact, it's still one of my most popular videos by a large margin, right? I was like, here's how I use DistroBox. It's still up and 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 linked to, and it gets a ton of, I think it still might be my most popular video. Um, you know, obviously I don't use it anymore because Brew kind of solves all that problems I have. And for development, right, we, um, uh, we encourage dev containers anyway. We, we don't really want, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff on the host. We want that with the project, coupled with the project, not the operating system. But that's a that's a topic for another day. 2345, you said Resolve just worked just fine. That's really awesome. I'm, 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 my memory's hazy on this one because um, I know that we had to add a few packages to the host to make Resolve work. It wasn't totally contained, but that's fine. You know, that's a pain point. I know people... Um, struggled to get that thing to work. So that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, on the terminal, it's pronounced Texas. Um, the P is silent and because naming things are hard. So this is a problem in all computing in general. Um, the name uh, Christian had picked before was being used by something else and he had to change it and you have no choice, right? Which is why in Fedora, it's just called terminal. And here it is. Welcome to terminal. You don't have to care about what it's called. The icon is terminal. Even the beautiful green icon with the grass. I love that thing. It's gone. Um, but yeah, it's just called terminal. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to deal with, uh, with that kind of stuff. Uh, and you can always use whatever terminal you want. So I'm really looking forward to seeing, um, Mitchell Hashimoto's new terminal goes TTY. I know a lot of people are, are interested in that. And, uh, it, it might be a thing that, uh, we'll definitely check out, but, um, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm Pixis fanboy number one, so I'll be, uh, we're definitely not, uh, uh, not changing that one, but you'll always have the option to swap out whatever you want. That's a thing. Uh, let's see, uh, Gnome desktop extension is very interesting. You mentioned the, the background logo extension, uh, which we actually don't use and we have it turned off. 
Uh, so I went ahead and did a pull request to just remove it because we don't use it. That's the thing that puts Fedora on the bottom right. It's very, um, you know, we don't really use it. We, we, we brand this top corner here uh, instead of that to kind of, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I've never really liked text on my background. I, I want to see the beautiful artwork. Speaking of beautiful artwork, this month's wallpaper is from the Pleistocene. This is the first time we're uh, uh, not doing dinosaurs. We're doing, these are woolly mammoths here. And um, this is a Smilodon. Uh, we are in North America, so uh, let's see which one of you can uh, identify the exact species of Smilodon this would be. That is your, uh, that is saying. I find the, I, I thought this thing was interesting. It's like package management is where it's really different. It's like, yes, because I don't do package management because I had better things to do with my life. Anyway, um, but uh, on the GNOME extensions, I just wanted to talk about why we include a lot of the things we do. The original intent of of uh, Bluefin was um, I wanted Ubuntu and, you know, Canonical wasn't making the Ubuntu I want anymore. And I wanted something standards based, you know, with the hope that it would be more cloud native, distroless, all the stuff that we're into. Um, and Fedora had the thing, but I missed my Ubuntu desktop. So a lot of the extensions we have like by default, you know, Bluefin is dash to dock with some app indicators. Um, and then you got to add the blur. I had to pay for this artwork. So the blur makes it look great. So that's worth every penny. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the kind of extensions that we pick are purposely chosen to kind of mimic the, what would a, what would a user expect? Right. Remember with our target, we're going to talk about our target audience later on here today. Um, uh, and with our target audience, right, are like open source developers and they're all on Mac. So kind of giving them that, here's your bottom dock, here's your app indicators, it kind of looks like a Mac, right? And, and that's the kind of vibe we go for. Uh, we did, uh, for a while, we were shipping the dock on the left like Ubuntu, but these days, you know, I think it depends on the aspect ratio. On my framework laptop, I like to have it on the bottom and on my ultra wides, I like to have it on the left. Um, so we just kind of leave it up to the user. Yeah, it'd be cool if we could do a magical thing where we figure out the aspect ratio and move it, whatever. But I don't know. It's up to you. Don't care. Uh, let's see what's up. Uh, 2854, this is actually on purpose. Matt mentions, uh, why would you ever, there's a you just to turning off automatic updates. Why would you ever use it? Um, that's actually um, a feature that a lot of use often because I travel for work. I go to conferences, right? And I have to go give presentations. And here I am. George Castro, Framework Linux Ambassador, Bluefin, I got to plug it in. It's got to work, right? So I can't afford a regression when I'm on the road. So what I do is before I get on the plane, I turn off my updates. I do my trip, right? Because I, you know, and then when I get to the conference, I plug, I test everything. I don't touch nothing, right? Um, so that it gives that experience. You know, I leave that to the Apple folks to sit there and wrestle with their whatever it is. All that stuff. I have to carry, I don't know. I have ports on my computer, so um, uh, that's not a problem for me. Uh, 2920 is, uh, he talks about you just, how they're purposely hidden in the terminal. Yeah, that is on purpose. Uh, most of the stuff that is in there is either workarounds that I don't want, or we have no choice, but we have to ship, right? Where it's like, if you have a problem and you show up on chat and it's like, oh man, that sucks, run this command, you know, uh, kind of thing. So we purposely like, uh, that's kind of the toolbox in the trunk of your car that you don't want to use. You know what I mean? Um, and also remember we're system administrators, so I don't have a magical GUI that will give you all the cool stuff, uh, because we don't know how to make one. Right. Um, and for a lot of these as well, like, sure. If I had a million bucks, right. We can go into the system settings. Right. And then here, yes, yeah, sorry. This is a little bit ugly. Uh, and in here somewhere there would be right in system. There would be a little slider here that would tell you how aggressive do you want your updates, right? And that would transparently give you GTS latest, uh, you know, and stable and all that stuff. And it would be magical and there would be no terminal involved, right? But, you know, unless anybody has anybody who knows like C and GTK hanging out, not doing anything to help us out, there's not much we can do, right? Um, and remember too, the whole concept of having streams on the desktop is, is, is kind of new, right? Um, and this is actually something that I do like to talk about uh, is, is the ability to say, 
you know, I want the same distro, but sometimes I want something aggressive. Sometimes I want something a little bit safer. Um, and that is a feature that we get due to its cloud native nature. So uh, that's a huge feature advantage for us, right? So yeah, it sucks. You have to use a rebase helper, but you know, at least it's possible, right? You upgrade an Ubuntu LTS machine, right? From 2004 to 2204 and the upgrade goes bad. You're restoring for backup, right? So yeah, it sucks that we have to have a CLI, but also, you know, not bad, not bad for a bunch of sysadmins. Um, that really sucks about your KVM. I'd love to know what model it is. And I'd also love, I would wonder if, if, if how that works with uh, upstream Fedora. Um, and then theming GTK apps. Uh, so we do include ADW GTK3, which I guess is supposed to fix that. You could set that in GNOME tweaks. Uh, the problem with trying to fix all these themes and stuff is most of that stuff is in your dot files and we're definitely not touching those, right? Um, and I'd rather get flame for themes being broken than your computer not upgrading properly. Um, and now let's get to the good stuff, which is, oh man, 16 minutes already. All right, let's see, here we go. So let's go ahead then and move on to my conclusions, which I think are mostly positive, but I'll let you guys be the judge of that after I'm done with this section. So uh, Bluefin has a major problem and it's it's a major one really it, their their problem is that their goal is legit and admirable and even their execution is great like a lot of times distros will set themselves some goals we got a great team benjamin sherman m2 tulip is on fire everybody in the U blue org is just killing it lately it's just amazing right that like the fact that we even got a review like this is pretty awesome, right? And on the other end, we have Bazite on NerdNest this week, on Digital Foundry. All that stuff is because of open source contributors. And I want you to remember that. And then they'll not be able to execute on those goals. They'll do it half-assed or, you know, they'll be so ambitious with their goals that they just can't possibly meet them. You blew, not the case. It, set some goals, it, it reached them. It created a very good distro that did the things that it was supposed to do, but their marketing is sus as the Gen Z. All right, first of all, that's going on the shirt, right? Um, that's definitely going on a shirt somewhere. Viewers would say, uh, if you talk to the developers, they'll tell you about cloud native technologies and GitOps and how they build it and they'll, nerd out about all those things for hours on end. And that's great. And I'm a nerd and I love that kind of stuff. But for normal people, none of that makes any sense. Okay, so I cheated because I do listen in on Matt's content and I listen to their lug meetings and all this stuff. So I know people have been talking about normal users. Um, normal users don't install operating systems. They buy devices. They go to Best Buy or they go to their Apple store and they buy devices, right? So who's Bluefin for, right? So if you've been listening to my channel for a while, right? I've always talked about what? The failure of the traditional Linux distro model, right? How many Linuxes have been commercially successful in the mass market? Android, Chrome OS, and Steam OS is like, it's getting a lot of hype. It's pretty good. Most of, I would argue that most of the new excitement around Linux is around gaming and handheld devices. Bazite is 10 times as popular as Bluefin and Aurora. Bazite is more popular than Kinoite and Silverblue combined. If you take Kinoite, Silverblue, Aurora, and Bluefin, Bazite is, is killing it according to the Count Me stats, which we're working on getting those graphs um, you know, on our website, but it's all public data. It's a, it's a service that uh, Fedora runs. So, I mean, the gamers, the gamers are really into it, right? So, um, so who, who's, who's Bluefin for, right? So my argument has always been the same, right? Um, I don't like Linux desktop has failed advanced users and developers. Normal users are not even on my radar right now, right? Um, we need to make this thing good for experts, and we need to make it good for developers because the only way matt that we can get what we want is we need to have developers using this stuff right three four percent of the market share over 30 years is is failure right like we don't have anybody to write apps 
right? We don't have enough people to port Genie to GTK4 or fix whatever, you know, flat pack thing you have to do, right? The only way we get to do that is get is to get developers involved, right? But how can we do that, right? We can't market Bluefin and Aurora to normal people, right? Because Linux desktop doesn't solve a problem people have, right? Like my, my dad doesn't call me and says, you know, um, I get me on this Linux, right? He'll call me and be like, man, you know, I'm getting pop-ups on my computer again, blah, 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 right? I could put my dad on Linux. Would I? Absolutely not. I bought on Chromebook, right? Um, do I think we can get there? Absolutely, I think we could. Why do you think we're busting our ass on this thing, right? Um, however, the problem with the distribution model, this is why we not we don't call it a distro, is it's broken. It doesn't work, right? The whole idea of people mangling packages, right? And then expecting upgrades to work and to cover every single use case has been nothing but failure, right? Um, so what do we do? We copy the places where Linux has had success and where has Linux had its success, right? In the server room in the first generation, what was the second gen? Uh, the second generation was mobile, right? Right. What was the third generation? Cloud native, right? So that's the pattern we're copying, right? And that's why it's so good. Like, um, you know, and that's, that's why I'm proud of it, right? Like, I love the thing, but I also have to be realistic, right? Um, you know, if sure, give me, give me $10 million in marketing budget, dude, I, we could rock it. Um, but that's not a realistic model right now. But what can I do, right? What can we do as individual contributors, right? We can contribute and support open source software. And I, sorry, I, uh, I don't like like my when my face is frozen, you know, because I feel, it feels like weird. So I'll just keep I'll just keep you talking there, Matt. Uh, this is my favorite Matt, the muted one. No, I'm just playing. Um, but like for us, it's about unlocking developers so that they can get their work done, right? And they can't get that done in normal Linux, right? You know why I know this? Because I've been doing this for 25 years, and they've been telling you this. They've been telling us the same thing over and over again. It's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. It doesn't work. I can't do this. I can't do that. App supports, you know, all that kind of stuff. But we'll never get there unless we have developers help us fix those problems, right? So that is the audience that Bluefin is specifically targeted for. Our DX images are way more popular than the non-DX images, right? And I think for a while it's going to be that way because I'm making Bluefin for professionals, for myself, for my coworker, my coworkers use talk about pressure my co-workers use bluefin at work right um and we do it on framework laptops and it's a fantastic experience but it's still quite not there yet right um so we do the best we can is the experience better than a traditional linux distribution i think so absolutely it's it's clearly better for new users right um but you're not kind of really not ready to market to them yet because we still have work to do our job is to fix the pipeline and that's where cloud native comes in. That's why it's a critical component and strategy of this entire thing, right? Remember all of the patterns and things that we're copying have been successful in the past, right? Um, Brian, myself, all the people that were like, we've been doing research on this topic for, oh, for so I can't even remember, right? Like the amount of decades of experience of distribution, uh, developers that I've like, talked to Linux platform teams from every major company. Like we've, we've all looked at the problem, right? And everyone's kind of coalescing around the thing that it's like, you know, what we have now doesn't work, you know, now is Bluefin or something like Bluefin, the future of the Linux desktop. I don't know. That's not really up to me. Right. All I can do is do the best I can with the tools that we have. Right. Um, but you know, like, the existing model also has just been proven to fail over and over and over again, right? To me, it's madness to not try something different. So that's kind of why we, why we do it that way. You know what I mean? Like, um, so we don't really target, um, we don't really target Linux users, existing Linux users. Cause if you're using Arch user, like, I don't care what you use. Like it's your computer, like whatever. Um, and no, I don't expect my dad to come project bluefin download, Thing, do the ISO or whatever, 
because one thing I have noticed, normal people, and, and ask anyone who's worked at a distribution, they're going to tell you the same thing, right? Normal users don't install distributions. They buy a device, right? They'll, they'll go buy, um, you know, a Linux laptop uh, preloaded, ideally, right? Because then you get support from the manufacturer. That's what people actually want, right? And, you know, our partnership with Framework is the best we could do right now, which I think is pretty good considering there's not that many of us, uh, generally speaking. So, um, yeah, but it is something I think about, right? Like when my dad, he looked at it and he goes, man, I really love this artwork. Um, can I get one of these frameworks? Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to buy him a framework. I'm going to put it together. I'm going to install Bluefin 4. I'm going to give it to him. You know what he's going to do? He's going to click his web browser and then he's not going to worry about any of the problems that Linux people tell us that we have because 95% of the people just need a web browser, right? A web browser and updates that don't work. A working pipeline, right? We get that and then kind of uh, encourage enthusiasts. Now it's up to the community enthusiasts like us to support our app developers Click that donate button, right? Support them, send good bug reports, you know, do the best that we can with the tools that you have and the knowledge that you have to help people out, right? To, to see if we can get the thing done, right? And either it's gonna work or it's not gonna work, right? But um, the, the wandering around in the desert for 30 years has proven not to work. So to me, that's, you know, sitting around thinking, man, you know, is this the year that my dad's going to learn Debian package? Like what? No, I don't want my dad to use Debian packaging. And I think that, it, you know, um, we see this a lot when, when traditional Linux users try to give us feedback, right? They're like, the problem with these things is they're going to look up a problem on the internet and none of that stuff is going to work. And I'm like, oh, wow, what a great feature. I help write a ton of that stuff, right? If you've ever had an Ubuntu problem, you've probably seen my face before. I'm sorry right? You know, what's better than like, um, Googling and finding a solution to your problem, not having to Google at all. <laughs> so, um, that's why our use case is so scoped. You know, our use case is, um, it is very, uh, like it's written down for a reason, right? Like I tell you, look, if you have an app and you depend on X 11, sorry, you know, use Ubuntu or, or X 11 or whatever thing that you have. Now we are building something for the next generation, right? And that's that's kind of the trick there. Um, but wow, 17 minutes, getting pretty pretty long in the tooth. Anyway, I hope I hope to show that's that's where that's coming from. Uh, Matt, I love love the video, love the content. Uh, same with Trafatine here, um, who, who kind of asked me a question at the end. Uh, he's like he's like, how are you going to convince traditional Linux users of uh, that they should switch. And I'm like, I, I don't care. I argue about system D all day for all I care. I don't like, I'm not here to, I'm not here to, um, convert anybody to do anything. Right. I'm here to get the, the people that want Linux and they love open source, but Linux isn't working for them. I need to get them back. Um, and I wrote about this in the forums a little bit. We, you know, if we can't win our home turf, <laughs> um, like, like, um, you know, like, I, I don't want to say why waste the time on, on the normals, because that is obviously important, but, um, yeah, you know, you got to get the house in order. <laughs> so hopefully that kind of shows where we're coming from. Um, I'm going to keep leaning in on the cloud native, uh, marketing because, you know, that's over 10 million developers that I, we just got for free thanks to Red Hat donating it to the CNCF. Um, and the feedback from, from that community has been incredible because that's going to give us the tech and the, um, uh, the kind of boost that I'm hoping for, for of excitement of getting open source developers who have given up on the Linux desktop, you know, uh, you know, give it another shot, give it another try, you know, especially if you have something like a framework, you know, you're much, much better off with a framework and Bluefin than you were with a Sputnik and Ubuntu 10 years ago, right? I know, cause I was there, you know, the thing ship with a PPA, like what? Um, so those days are, those days are gone. Right. And, um, I'm here for it. And with that, thank you very much. Thanks for putting up with my, uh, rant there and, uh, love y'all. See ya.